This week on Maker Update, portable ski ball, the return of Blimp Duino, a reanimated zombie hand, a Raspberry Pi robot with expanding wheels, toy cars for the apocalypse, super glues compared, a balloon engine for Lego, and a $250 resin printer. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing great. I've been giving my 3D printer a workout recently, trying to churn out Halloween decorations and costume pieces. My kid wants a Fortnite mask that I'm trying to print out as we speak. But I have a great show for you today, so let's get started with the project of the week. Over on Instructables, Seamster has this awesome skee-ball game he made. Not only is it portable, thanks to wheels on the back, but it's also collapsible. What makes this project particularly great, aside from the fact that it's skee-ball, is that it's a fun mix of salvage material. The frame is made from an old bed frame, the rubber is from mud flaps, there's metal from old road signs, and even an old basketball backboard. It looks great, and there are a ton of little tips and ideas to pull from this guide. Be sure to check it out. It's time for some news. There's a new Arduino-controlled blimp kit available called the Blimp Duino 2. The kit goes for around $75 and includes the board, motors, frame, and even a Mylar balloon. What makes it particularly noteworthy is that the original Blimpduino was an effort by Chris Anderson of 3D Robotics, one of the pioneers of consumer drones. This second gen design has been over 10 years in the making. As you'd expect, the board has a lot of features of a consumer drone, including a three axis gyroscope, an accelerometer, a magnetometer, a laser altimeter, Wi-Fi, and a pressure temperature sensor. You can also add a camera, and two additional servos. Assuming it's quiet, I'd kind of like to have one for the office or the backyard. I have just a few other projects to share. Dana Wall over on Adafruit has this guide on making this crawling animatronic zombie hand. The project uses a Halloween zombie glove, a Circuit Playground Express board, a servo, and some wheels to drag behind it. By tying fishing line between the servos and the fingertips, you get this crawling motion that pulls it across the floor. For a more practical robot, check out the Friller Robot by Al Bencomo. Developed for NASA as an all-terrain rover, this robot has wheels that flare out to get it over obstacles. The heart of the project is a Raspberry Pi computer connected to an Adafruit motor hat. The Pi is running Android Things software, and there's a cool touch interface you use to control it with your smartphone. You can find all the files you need over on the project's GitHub page. I'll also link to a write-up on it in a recent issue of RasPi Magazine. I have some tips to share over on MakeZine. Gareth Branwin takes an in-depth look at modifying die-cast toy cars with a post-apocalyptic look. He's been using the results for playing the popular Gaslands tabletop game, which I now totally want to try with my family. Also, Gareth's Tips of the Week column has some great ones comparing the strength of various types of CA glue and an advanced technique for cutting the tip on a caulking tube. Through the Adafruit blog, I learned about this 3D printed piece for adding balloon power to your Lego vehicles. There's a little lip on the top tube for holding the balloon on, and the air from the balloon shoots out the back tube, pushing it forward. Low tech, but effective. Also on Adafruit, and also low tech, there's a new battery holder in stock that uses an old fashioned knife switch to turn power on and off. It looks like a great thing to have handy for quickly building motor or LED projects with kids. It beats popping the batteries out or wiring an inline switch. Tested has a hands-on review up on the Sparkmaster FHD resin printer. It's a $250 3D printer that acts as a small Formlab style resin printer. There are some limitations, but at that price, it's worth checking out the video if you're curious about the trade-offs. And back on my channel, Maker Project Lab, I got a chance to talk with Nicole Smith, AKA Penelope Bolnick, about her wearable 3D printed projects we talk about the process of printing on tool fabric, embedding strings and 3D prints for earrings, and using office folder plastic for a stained glass effect. Check it out. Maker Fairs, this weekend we have Beijing, China, Fredonia, New York, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and my hometown fair in Oakland, California, where I'll be giving a talk about new features in Tinkercad. But if none of those are near you, head to makerfair.com to find one in your area. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes emailed out to you automatically every week. And I volunteer to do this show because I love doing the show, but with your support on Patreon, we can build it up and make it better. We're coming up on the 100th episode of Maker Update in just a few weeks, and I'd love to see if we can get the show support up to $100 a month. Right now, we're at around 40, but I think we can do it. 
All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.